Is your liver causing your palpitations, ectopic beats, or AFib? Don't you want to know? What if it was and you could actually do something to heal it? Today, we need to talk about one of the most important metabolic organs in our body, the liver, and why you cannot afford to ignore the warning signs that it may be hurting you silently. This is going to be a deep dive into the silent epidemic of fatty liver. So if you're looking for something short and sweet, you've come to the wrong video. But if you really want a knowledge dump, stick with me. I'll make it worth your time. We are going to cover fatty liver, what it is, how it stacks with other metabolic problems, how fatty liver creates a perfect storm for palpitations, ectopic beats, AFib, and generally leads to deteriorating health throughout the body, how fatty liver accelerates other disease processes that can lead to ectopic beats or AFib, things that may be fattening your liver you are not even aware of, and finally, how you can get checked for fatty liver and what you can do to improve or clear it up completely. Hello and welcome. I'm Big Northern Bear and I've successfully used lifestyle modification to almost completely eliminate my problematic AFib, high blood pressure, diabetes and sleep apnea, along the way losing 110 pounds. I also had fatty liver, but not anymore. So what is fatty liver? And how does it stack with other metabolic issues to create the perfect storm for heart and health issues? Fatty liver is a condition in which excess fat accumulates in the liver. This can cause inflammation and damage to the liver over time. If reversed soon enough, fatty liver can be cleared up. But if your liver is damaged beyond a certain point, you may never be able to reverse it completely or at all. Now we all know AFib is caused by underlying heart conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease or heart valve problems. We also know AFib and things like frequent PVCs and PACs and other palpitations are highly related to metabolic problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea and obesity. High blood pressure in turn is related to obesity, diabetes and thus fatty liver and all by itself causes no end of heart rhythm problems as well as greatly increased risk of stroke and heart attack. All these other conditions are well discussed but we never hear about these recent studies that have shown that there is a significant association between fatty liver and AFib. I put a link to a meta-analysis of multiple studies and over 238,000 participants down below. Fatty liver is one of those silent predators lurking below the surface that is often not investigated. Often, by the time it is discovered, many other related conditions have already started to take flight. If you show me a person who has pre-diabetes, high blood pressure and some level of obesity, there's about a 70% chance they also have fatty liver. In fact, people with fatty liver are more likely to have AFib, PVCs, PACs, or other ectopic beats, even after controlling for other risk factors such as age and sex and other comorbidities. Just the presence of fatty liver alone is enough to indicate increased risk of AFib and ectopic beats like PACs and PVCs. One possible explanation for this link is that the liver plays an important role in regulating the body's metabolism including the breakdown and clearance of hormones and other signaling molecules. When the liver is damaged by fatty liver disease, it can produce inflammatory signals that can affect not only your heart, but the rest of your body. Additionally, fatty liver disease can increase the risk of developing metabolic syndrome, a condition that is associated with AFib and ectopic beats. Insulin resistance is a key link between metabolic syndrome and fatty liver. When the body is resistant to insulin, it produces more insulin to try to regulate the blood sugar levels. This excess insulin can cause the liver to produce more fat and store it, leading to fatty liver. In turn, the presence of ex excess fat in the liver can worsen insulin resistance, leading to a vicious cycle of worsening metabolic health. With all this going on, normal carbohydrate metabolism also becomes impaired. As your muscles become insulin resistant, it becomes necessary that you store the extra glucose as fat, further worsening the problem and leaving you feeling tired or unmotivated and hangry. This vicious cycle is more likely to leave you with other metabolic issues such as obesity and sleep apnea, all of which independently increase your risk of AFib and palpitations. By the time your liver is starting to become fatty, all these things are starting to stack up. It's a disaster for your risk of annoying ectopic beats, but also for more serious conditions such as AFib, stroke, heart attack, and blood clots. Even the risk of seemingly unrelated conditions like cancer and Alzheimer's goes up quite a bit. Now obviously, humans have been on the planet a long time, and fatty liver being so widespread in the general population is a relatively new thing. So, 
what could be kicking off this runaway, damaging process in one of our most vital organs? Fatty liver can be caused by excess alcohol consumption. Everyone knows this. In fact, it was rare to find fatty liver in non-alcoholics until not long ago. Another major culprit indicated lately is concentrated fructose. Now, I do not mean the kind you find in an apple or an orange. I mean the kind you find in its refined state, such as high fructose corn syrup. This has crept into so much of our modern processed food. Even worse, it is a major ingredient in much of our modern drinks, where it can be consumed literally by liters at a time without a thought. High fructose corn syrup is a combination of glucose and fructose, which are simple sugars that are metabolized differently by the body. Unlike glucose, which is metabolized by all cells in the body, fructose is primarily metabolized in the liver. When we consume foods or beverages containing high levels of fructose, such as those sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, the liver has to work hard to process it all. One way in which high fructose corn syrup contributes to fatty liver is by increasing the production of triglycerides in the liver. Triglycerides are a type of fat stored in fat cells and can accumulate in the liver when there is an excess of fructose in the diet. When the liver is overloaded with fructose, it can't process all of it, and the excess fructose is converted into triglycerides stored in the liver as fat. You end up with fatty liver. Another way high fructose corn syrup contributes to fatty liver is by increasing your insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone that helps regulate your blood sugars and maintain your metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. When you consume too much high fructose corn syrup, the liver becomes insulin resistant. It doesn't respond to this hormone the way it should. This can lead to further increased production of glucose and triglycerides in the liver, which then can contribute to the development of fatty liver. In addition, high consumption of high fructose corn syrup has been shown to increase inflammation in the liver. This can cause damage to liver cells and lead to development of more severe forms of liver disease. Liver damage cannot be ignored. What about other common food ingredients? Well, trans fats, also known as partially hydrogenated oils, are unsaturated fats that have been chemically modified to have a longer shelf life and improve the texture of processed foods. These types of fats are commonly found in baked goods, fried foods, and processed snack foods. Trans fats have been shown to contribute to the development of fatty liver in a few different ways. Trans fats can cause inflammation of the liver, leading to liver damage and contributing to the development of fatty liver. Inflammation can also worsen existing liver damage, thus accelerating the disease process. Trans fats have been shown to increase insulin resistance and often comes in the same processed foods loaded with high fructose corn syrup, a double attack on your liver functions. Trans fats can increase oxidative stress in the liver. This creates an imbalance between the production of reactive oxygen species and the body's antioxidant defenses, overwhelming them. This can lead to the damage of liver cells, contributing to the development of fatty liver. And finally, trans fats can interfere with the metabolism of essential fatty acids such as omega-3, omega-6 acids. This can lead to a deficiency of all these important nutrients that your liver needs just to function well and maintain liver health. As you can see, this is a massive cascade, or a tornado of disaster in the making. We need to escape this cycle. Fortunately, you can do so, and you can do it by implementing the same lifestyle changes you would make to treat diabetes, obesity, AFib, and high blood pressure. Now you should know, fatty liver is easy to diagnose via an ultrasound, and if you have other metabolic syndrome issues, to me it's a no-brainer to go get your liver checked. Talk to your doctor. Another telltale sign is having high triglyceride count on your cholesterol test. If you, for whatever reason, cannot get testing to diagnose fatty liver, and you have other metabolic issues that are likely part of a poor metabolic package, I'd just proceed as though you have it. The interventions you make for fatty liver hold true for other metabolic problems. To stop the damaging process of fatty liver, it's important to eliminate the consumption of foods and beverages that contain high fructose corn syrup or other concentrated sugars. This includes sugary drinks such as soda, sports drinks, and fruit juice, as well as processed foods such as baked goods and snacks and condiments. In my mind, the drinks are the most damaging as they do not even come packaged with fiber or protein that may help limit the damage a bit. It also doesn't help they are often sold in buckets and consumed in a single sitting. Increase your intake of healthy fats. Consuming healthy fats, such as those found in nuts, seeds, avocado, and fatty fish like salmon, 
and monounsaturated fats such as grass-fed, organic beef and pork can help improve liver function and reduce inflammation. Avoid trans fats which can increase inflammation and contribute to liver damage. Again, trans fats are usually concentrated in processed foods. Choose lean and lower calorie protein sources. Consuming adequate amounts of protein is important for maintaining liver health, but choosing lean sources of protein is key. Opt for fish, skinless poultry, grass-fed ruminant meat, legumes, fermented tofu, and fermented dairy instead of processed meats. Organic pork is an excellent source of monounsaturated fats that should also be part of your diet. Eat more vegetables and fruit and a lot less junk. Considering doubling or tripling your current intake of vegetables and fruit rather than denying yourself other things. By doing this, there will simply be less room in your diet for processed foods. A diet high in vegetables and fruit has been shown to help reduce inflammation and improve liver function. Incorporate plenty of fruits, vegetables, legumes and nuts and seeds into your diet. Limit alcohol consumption. If you have a fatty liver already, I say just stop altogether. Especially if you have AFib or palpitations and ectopic beats. The writing's on the wall for you. Ditch the drinks. Maintain a healthy weight. Maintaining a healthy weight can help improve liver function and reduce inflammation. Aim to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. Even if you are obese, losing just 5-10% to 10 of your body weight can have an enormous positive impact on your health and your liver. Exercise. Exercise improves insulin sensitivity. Improved insulin sensitivity can help reduce the amount of fat produced by the liver and help reduce the risk of developing fatty liver. As well, regular exercise has been shown to reduce inflammation throughout the body, including the liver. As for diets, well, ketogenic, low carb, vegetarian, vegan, Mediterranean and DASH diets. All of these have studies showing they have improved fatty liver. Some commonality being the weight loss and elimination of processed foods. Any diet that you can adhere to and helps you lose weight will also help you improve your fatty liver. The best diet is a whole foods diet that you can actually stick to in the long term. There is no perfect diet if you cannot stick to it. It's important to find one that you can and it's okay to be flexible. Just keep trying to improve as you go and get better at your diet. Intermittent fasting is also a dietary approach that involves cycling between periods of fasting and eating. Several studies have suggested that intermittent fasting may be effective in improving fatty liver. Here are a few ways that intermittent fasting or IF can help. Intermittent fasting has been shown to reduce insulin resistance. Intermittent fasting can help the body shift from burning glucose to burning fat for energy and by burning more fat the liver has less fat to store which can also help improve liver health. Intermittent fasting has been shown to reduce oxidative stress. As mentioned earlier, oxidative stress can lead to damage to the liver cells, contributing to the development of fatty liver. Intermittent fasting can help promote weight loss, which is an important factor in reducing the amount of fat in your liver. Losing even small amount of weight can lead to significant improvements in liver health, providing you continue to keep it off. Now, a word of caution on fasting. Fasting for extended periods or without proper nutrition can have negative effects, including stress and decreased energy. This is something you want to avoid. In my opinion, the sweet spot for intermittent fasting is a fairly easy 14 hours a day. Eight of those, you'll be sleeping. Stop eating anything with calories after 9 p.m. at night and have your first meal at 11 a.m. the next day. I bet many of you slept in that late without starving to death, right? After a few days, this will feel really easy. Okay, so let's recap. Fatty liver is an accelerator for other metabolic problems and cannot be ignored. Fatty liver is largely caused by dietary choices and alcohol, and especially by ingredients in processed foods and manufactured drinks. Foods with trans fats and concentrated fructose or other concentrated sugars should be avoided. Fatty liver, if not beyond a certain point, can be reversed before real damage is done. Switching to a non-processed food diet, exercising regularly, and doing some intermittent fasting will help improve fatty liver. Losing even a small amount of weight and keeping it off has also been shown to improve fatty liver. So, I hope that you all now understand my passion for this topic and why I bring it up in my live streams, and why I so strongly recommend a diet of unprocessed natural foods and regular exercise as the most important things, not only for your AFib, but your ectopic beats and your overall health. I put a fair bit of work into this video, and I hope you found it useful. I have a simple ask from you though. First, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and help me build it. 
Second, suggest a topic in the comments below. And lastly, join my email list from the link in the description. You'll never miss a video no matter what platform I post it on. You'll also have the opportunity to meet up with me and other subscribers for a non-broadcasted Ask Me Anything session in my virtual studio. I hope this video helps you to make some easy changes that can have a big impact on your health. I want the best for you, and I hope you do as well. This is your friend, Big Northern Bear, out. Joseph Branson, Burlington. This is where I always come when I'm in AFIP. Up there, second floor from the top, right in the corner, was a cardiac ward. I spent five long days looking out this window, down in the parking lot, and talked to my wife, who couldn't come up because of the pandemic. So she'd sit in a SUV and just phone me. So I'm glad to have those days behind me. So that was a long weekend there. And now I'm just jogging by it on my way to the other pier. So we'll see you there. I don't wanna let myself down myself.